Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the final match of the day here at PAX East 2019. The Mythic Invitational is going to get its chance to find out the last player who will advance to tomorrow's championship games. Who will it be? Let's find out right now as we bring our competitors to the stage. The first one, a Magic the Gathering Hall of Famer and widely regarded as one of the best players of all time. From France, it's Gabriel Nassif. Gabriel will be running Teamer Reclamation and Esper Acuity. Not the most common decks that we've seen here, but ones we have seen prove very successful. His opponent, the 2015 World Magic Cup champion from Italy, it's Andrea Mangucci. He will be running Esper Control and Mono White. It's the slightly off meta versus the true meta of the tournament. But we'll come out on top. Let's head into the game. Good luck. Have fun. Off to your stations and off to the commentary desk. Thank you, Day9, and uh, welcome back to the desk here. So players are going to get seated and ready for action. We'll get a chance to take a look at their deck list. But make no mistake, these are two high-level, professional-level players, although I will say that Gabriel Nassif not in the Magic Pro League. He is in the Hall of Fame, certainly has a resume to back up uh, you know, an all-timer level of, uh, of yeah. play. On the other hand, uh, Mangucci, well, he, he just is in the, in the Magic Pro League, so he's a straight-up professional Magic player. Yeah, he consistently puts up results at the Mythic Championships uh, since I've seen him on the tour. He just Every time he's in there, top 16, top 32 at the end of the season, He's a top competitor, so no surprise he's in the MPL, and no surprise he's here in competing for a spot in the top four. Yeah, kind of cool for our top four if you zoom out, regardless of the outcome of this match for European players. So dominated by Europe here at the uh, Mythic Invitational. Take a look at uh, Yellow Hat's first deck, Teamer Reclamation. One of the few copies of this out in the field, David. Yeah, and we've seen this numerous times on the stream so far. And as I've said, this deck, uh, it doesn't want to see the mono white aggro deck. It doesn't like quick creature decks. Those decks can uh, beat it down before it has time to set up. I believe last time we watched, uh, Savitz played his mono white deck against this, and Nassif really didn't even get to do anything before he was dead. So if uh, if he runs well, he'll get paired up this deck against the Esper Control deck of Mangushi, because that's what this deck is uh, made to prey upon. A deck that gives it time to set up and then take over with massive card and mana advantage. On the other on the other side here for Nassif is Esper Acuity, as you mentioned before. And th th this randomness element here to which player gets to play which deck in the first game matters huge. It really punished uh, Nassif here in his match against Savic, and we'll see how it goes here. But this is the classic control deck in the format, though, with a little bit of a twist, Dovin's Acuity in there against the aggressive decks as the main card draw engine. Uh, here's the sideboard for the Esper Acuity deck as well. Yeah, a key card for him is the Mastermind's Acquisition. He runs three, so he relies heavily on the sideboard to get cards that he owns not in the game. He can use it to get cards out of his deck, but this is his deck geared toward creatures decks with cards like Cry of the Carnarium and Moment of Craving, Kaya's Wrath. Here's Andrea Mangucci with his Esper Control List. He also brought one of these. Now his other deck is significantly different, but here this is the more traditional build of Esper Control with Teferi here of Dominari instead of the Dovin Security. Yeah, we saw this list out of a lot of the MPL players, uh, the Esper Control mono white combo and most of the Esper Control list. They may differ by one or two cards here for a little bit of style preferences, but they all function the same way. And they all rely, this one only has one Mastermind's acquisition. It doesn't rely on it as heavily as the Seeds deck. And here is the mono white aggro deck that is different than any other decks here uh, in, in our uh, decider. Uh, this is the aggressive deck that, you know, out of the four decks possible, this is the only one that's an aggressive deck. Yeah, there's no mono red aggro between these, these two players' four decks. Take a look at their uh, kind of tail of the tape here on the head-to-head -head here. That is Yellow Hat, started back in 95. He's been playing Magic for a very long time. Extremely experienced player and one of the most experienced players in the field here at the Mythic Invitational. Mangucci is a little more recent, but still started back in 2004, really kind of broke onto the scene maybe five, six years ago on the professional scene, but still he has not left once he broke through and it's really shown his uh, his chops. Players are just about to get started. If you want to take a look at these deck lists or a little bit more about the players while you're watching, check out Cardboard Live. That's a plugin that you can see on your screen there. It was developed specifically for this event and you can get player bio information and, uh, and deck lists even while we're watching here as well. Take a look at the opener. So what deck ended up in the hands here for Nassif? It looks like he's got his teamer deck. Yeah, he's really hoping Mangucci's gonna be on the Esper deck. 
This is an interesting hand. I mean, Niv Mizzet and the Ooh. Ooh. Niv Mizzet Explosion Expansion are two cards you aren't going to be using for a long time. Maybe ever here. Yeah, so it's kind of a hand that doesn't have as many cards as, as the number says. And he happens to be up against the mono white deck, and he's on the draw. Yeah, this is absolute nightmare scenario here. Oh, and he kept. He does have a for yellow fire. hat. And this is not what he wanted to see. You see, he gives a little nod like, of course, of course, of course, you're on the play with Mono White. Exactly what I hoped would not happen. And Manguchi has to know that this is going to give him an advantage. Now, the good news, if you look at Manguchi's hand, it's a little slow. He doesn't have another one drop or a two drop to play. Assuming he doesn't fill this draw, and his next play is not going to be until turn three of History of Benalia. Nasif is on the draw. He does have a Shivan fire for this first threat. Uh, he doesn't have to take two if he wants to cast it with his stomping ground, but what's the difference in that or just taking two from attacking, so I think you're going to do that. And he did draw Wilderness Reclamation. The reason that's key is because the following turn, it'll allow him to have eight or ten mana, depending on if he has a fifth land, which will allow him to start casting these expansion explosions. So Get in them out of your hand. It's so difficult to get these aggressive decks that put the, the major he, pressure on he you. has a chance, depending on how Min, uh, Minguchi's draw fills in and what else he draws here. If he can draw maybe a growth spiral on the next two draw steps to kind of jump start jump at him ahead one turn and get him to that wilderness reclamation a turn faster he might have a chance to get in this game and take over okay the Seif's gonna well he's gonna play a tap land here he decided to leave shift and fire in hand for now that does guarantee of course that he takes two damage from the bodyguard he's gonna be, marshall off the top doesn't help here yeah he's gonna be really relieved that his opponent said go Oh, another Niv Mizzet. He has most of his expensive spells now in hand. Expansion Explosion times two and two Niv Mizzet Perun. Not really what he wants to see at this point. Yeah, it doesn't really do much for you having the second copy. I mean, it, it can if they play Conclave, Conclave Tri Tribunal, which they, you know, there are three copies of, but it's not really what you want to draw here. All right, he's going to play an island for the turn and just simply pass the turn back. He will have to use that shift and fire, though, at some point during the course of this turn. He doesn't want to take four damage off of the Dauntless Bodyguard here. No, I think he's already see, taken two. I think you're going to see him cast it here in combat. Oh. Wow, he's, he's taking it. He actually did take the four here, keeping that shift and fire at the ready. He's got a stomping ground. He can cast it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, if I get yet why. I mean, I think you want to preserve your life total so you can make it to the, the late game and cast those spells. And yeah, I mean, you could eventually cast it with Picker at five mana to maybe get rid of a 4-4, four, four, but you may not even live that long. When you get to five mana, you'll be you're way past that point, so. No, he still isn't casting it. Here's land number three, Assault for Falls for One of the Yellow things Hat. he could have been doing is he does have two copies of Fiery Cannonade. So perhaps he is he bluffing. Might, he wants he might just want to expansion. And he might have wanted his, his opponent to not um, play into it. You know, might think, okay, what's he doing? Well, yeah, I, I he's think he's just going to expansion it. Copy yeah, it I think he's just waiting for turn three here where he can cast effectively two copies of Shift Fire. He's going to leave that one on the stack and then, you know, try to take advantage of expansion here. Explosion's a very slow card. Red, red, blue, blue, X. That's a lot of mana no matter which way you cut it. But expansion's only two. Yeah, now he copies it. He clears the board. Pretty fortunate play because had Minguchi played Banalish Marshall, he would have to use the copy on both copies on Banalish Marshall. All right, so bang bang, two for two there, but it did cost a little bit of life there for Yellow Hat. He's uh, taking four, he's down to 16, but currently facing no board. Oop, that's going to change very quickly though. Here's Venerated, locks it on plus the Knight token off of History of Benalia. And, uh, you know, when Mancucci untapped for this turn, he had zero power. Now he's got seven. He's got seven. And Boom. This is uh, not a bad spot. He's going to get to play Wilderness Reclamation here. It will untap his land, so he has Sinister Sabotage at the ready. But uh, none of those cards are going to deal with the seven in play, and he's at 16, so that's going to put him at nine. He can counter whatever uh, Mancucci plays. I imagine he'll play Conclave Tribunal and try and get rid of the Reclamation. Forcing uh, the Seif to protect it, or at least make the decision. He's going to be able to attack for nine because of chapter three of the history of Benalia. Mancucci's lining up history of Benalia here. And if that happens, I assume that uh, that the Seif will counter basically any relevant spell, which is effectively anything at this point. And there it is, Sinister Sabotage is going to counter it. I wonder if he can try to set himself up to get explosions to kill a creature and draw some cards as well, uh, using the Wilderness Reclamation. 
but right now, bang, bang, down to seven. Yeah, he's going to be able to... This is painful. He's going to be able to float five mana, untap his lands, cast have ten mana total, cast Expansion Explosion for six. Kill the Venerator, locks it on, draw six cards. Take three, go down to four. This is getting very sketchy here. But then to see, but this is this is what a win looks like for him. I mean, it, it's not like it's an easy matchup. No, I actually think he's in good shape here. He's going to draw six cards, get rid of the threat, take three and go to four. But next turn, assuming he gets a land, which he should in six cards, he can play Niv Mizzet. His lands will untap. He'll have a Niv Mizzet with six or seven mana untapped, a handful of cards. Every card he ca he casts, he gets a trigger to kill a creature. I actually think because Mangucci's draw was so slow, Yellowhead's a big favorite right here. Conclave Tribunal, pretty annoying, though, when you have a Niv-Mizzet card that normally you feel like you're going to be able to protect pretty easily. Yeah, and you normally don't want a second one, but happen he happens to have a backup Niv-Mizzet, so. All right, well, let's see what happens here over the course of the next two turns. They will likely decide the outcome of this game. We have reached that all-important mid-game here where this is it. Six damage to your venerated Loxodon. I draw six cards thanks to the power of Wilderness Reclamation, effectively doubling the Thief's mana at this point. Now he's like going to discard. discard here. Yeah. He says, I don't need this extra land. Passes the turn back. Land off the top from Mangucci. Wow, that's not what he wanted to draw here. He could get in for four if he wants to cast the Banalish Marshal at this point. And that's exactly what he's going to do. This sets up two lethal threats for the next turn. Both the Banalish Marshal and the Knight Token would be lethal. It's actually perfect, too, because then it leaves him just enough to cast Conclave Tribunal on the Wilderness wow. Reclamation. This was a great turn here for Mangucci. He passes the turn back. Is there anything that Gabriel Nassif can do from this point facing down two lethal threats? Just casting Niv-Mizzet wouldn't be enough anyway. No. He's short, of, short some mana, it looks a little yeah. bit, too. Well, I guess if he grows spirals and hits a Wilderness Reclamation, plays a Wilderness Reclamation and a land, floats one... Nope. Still got to kill both threats, both creatures, right? Yeah. yeah, Explosion can take out one of them in that far-fetched scenario there. But even then, he doesn't have that at the ready. And uh, yeah, that Conclave yeah. Tribunal was just backbreaking. Right, the, the fact that he was able to attack and use the Tribunal in that turn. And play a, another lethal threat. Put himself with two lethal threats and a Tribunal all in one turn was just too much. Even if Nasif is able to kill either creature, he still takes three. I mean, the, the, the math is exact, and it's crazy. It's so close, right? Because he could potentially take down that 4-4, four -four, depending on how he plays it out, but he'll be exactly dead on board. Wow, this one got so close. And it looked like we might see Gabriel Nassif get to the point where he could steal a win here against Mono White while he was on the draw. But I think Andrea Mangucci is going to be able to take this it's rough. Game number one. Nasif was 5-0 and oh coming into his match with Savitz. His team or rec deck got matched up against Mono White, got destroyed. Same thing happened again. Had that happen back to back, just pretty unlucky. But who knows how many times he dodged Mono White leading sure. up to it with that 5-0. Here's Growth Spiral for, for uh, Nasif. This is desperation time right wow, here. Wow, and he even drew the Reclamation, but oh unfortunately it's just not enough. sakes. Well, let's see. He could put a Hinterland Harbor into play, put a Steam Vince and go to one. He'll have five mana, tap four for the Reclamation, float one, untap them all. He could Expansion Explosion for three, but he still doesn't have enough to have anything left over. I mean, there's nothing he could draw. Won't have enough. There's no Blink in his deck. Looking at his deck list. Shiv and Fire's not, the creatures are too large. He won't have mana to cast it with Kicker. No, he's going to run out that Wilderness Reclamation. Boy, that sequence of plays that you mentioned, David, actually came to fruition, and he is just a single life point short, facing down two lethal threats with the ability to kill one and even draw a bunch of cards. So, so close for the seed. Untapped and went to one and floated a mana. He'd have seven, eight mana. Is there any card he could draw? No, I just don't see it. Eight mana. You can Expansion Explosion for three, which is seven of it, to kill the Marshal. But then you only have one mana left over, and there's nothing for one mana he can do. Right, the minimum three toughness means that Shivenfire's just not an out here for Gabriel Nassif. 
You can see how intense Manguchi looks there in his seat because he knows how close he is to just winning this game, and he's trying to figure out what could he possibly have. That's a lot of mana untapped and a lot of cards in hand. But it's pretty simple for Manguchi at this point. Just send him in. Yeah, jam that orange button. Right, what are you going to do? Show me. And now Nassif is deciding if he wants to play Chemister's Insight or Expansion Explosion. And it looks like he's decided on the Chemister's Insight here. This is pure desperation, though, he for needs Gabriel Nassif. Need some Root Snares in this deck. Yeah. And a few other cards I can think of that go well with Wilderness Reclamation. And that does it. Game number one goes to Andrea Mangucci. Boy, he got the exact matchup he wanted. He got to be on the play with Mono White versus the Wilderness Reclamation deck, and it went exactly how it's supposed to go from there. Andrea Mangucci cruising to game one victory. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not over. Nassif still has his Esper Acuity deck against Esper Control. He would much rather also have had his Teamer Reclamation deck against Esper Control. That has a little, a little bit better matchup, but he's not. A, he can still do it. He can still do it. You know, if he gets this match, we'll go to a game three, and they'll have to make some decisions about which way he wants to go with it. The C5 has been in a lot of high pressure matches before. You know, it's not one to tilt, as we call it, to let uh, results affect him. You know, he might show that he's a little disappointed about it, but once we start playing, he'll, he'll, be, he'll have his head in the game. Looks like the players getting their second decks ready. like he's having a, a little discussion with one of our tournament officials there. Just getting a, a quick restart, it looks like, to make sure that everything's good to go. So we'll just take a minute here, taking a look out at the floor here at PAX East, David. Look at all the people watching. Hi, everybody. And there's also, I'm told, on the Skywalk up there, you can actually hear us uh, over the speakers. So Unbelievable. This is a pretty insane match, wait, match wait, wait, right so, here. So, so this match is the difference between 12 and a half and 45K? Yeah, $32,500. <laughs> $32, $32, but it's not just that, because it could be more. Yeah, right? yeah, You can of think course. of the equity, and we can get the real number, but it's at least yeah. $32,500. Bare minimum. Wow, incredible. By the way, you, no see pressure, that, boys. you see that yellow hat sitting there. That is, of course, his namesake, yellow hat. And I'll tell you what, David, that's the one I asked him. That is the oh, hat I, he wore I all those it. years ago. I remember the day this was yeah. conceived. All right, here we go. Looks like we got opening hands here for at least... Gabriel Nassif. So, oh, excuse me, that was actually yeah. for Manguchi. The this fairies are in Nassif. Manguchi's deck. Dovin's Acuities are going to be in Nassif's deck. Right. Oop, a mulligan. Uh oh. Three Godless Triple Shrines. Godless Shrine no and blue no mana? blue mana. Now he does know his matchup. He knows he's. He knows he's not under any pressure. So. Keep that in mind when making his decisions. You, and what you mean is, no matter what decisions are going to happen here for mulligans or decks or whatever is that he's not going to be getting attacked on the he ground. He knows there's not going to be a turn one, two, one, turn two, more two ones. Have to, you know, he's going to have time. Yeah, he's going to have time regardless. And that does, of course, affect your mulligan decision in a major way. It's another one of the interesting points when they when the players make their decision on mulligan. It's so different depending on what deck your opponent got. Absolutely. Right? Like, in the first match, you don't know yeah. what you're going to be up against. You and you're one of <laughs> two. Thinking, well, I would keep this against one of their decks, but I would definitely mulligan it against one of the other decks. And you have to kind of weigh out those options. Those are decisions that Magic players have not traditionally had to make for you either don't know at all what your opponent's playing or you have yes. a pretty darn good idea or you literally know their deck list it's one of those three options absolutely now this hand i'm just glad i don't have to make the mulligan decision part of me says well you got lands and spells you just got to hope you rip a blue and so does Nassif. yeah i'd keep that one for sure you don't want to go to five on the play but unfortunately i don't think he can keep now what about the hand here from Manguchi? One of the things that has come up time and time again, David, for you and I in the booth on these Esper mirrors, whether they're this version or the straight up version, is these dead cards in hand always end up being a big factor. Yeah. He's already got a couple. Yeah, dead cards, cards that don't do anything in this match. Cry of the Carnarium doesn't really have a function. He it's would trade just, those out for lands in a heartbeat. Oh, and for lands, yeah. for sure. Lands right. are some of the most important things you can have in a control matchup, but Cry of the Carnarium, he, he trade for a ham sandwich right now. I mean, it literally does nothing. Uh, you know, you can get in the graveyard to maybe flip a search for Escanta, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. So, in a way, he's kind of got a five-card hand right now. So, it, it's not as bad as Yellow Hat think, uh, would think, you know. And Teferi costs five. He doesn't even have the, the, th the fourth and fifth land, so. Man, he got me hungry with that ham sandwich thing now. 
We're going to trade ham this sandwich. laptop for a ham sandwich. Ham sandwich is just kind of a filler. We know he's, you want to say someone could do something with anything. You can beat me with a ham yeah, sandwich. But you know me, dude. I'm hungry now. You, 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 I'm triggered. I, I need some food. They have a little box of ham sandwiches back in the back for us. Yeah, see, like that. Nice ciabatta. Moist. I don't know if I'd use that word in particular, but uh, let's see the scry here. It looks like Thought Erasure, another blue card, is going to go to the bottom here, and we are underway in game number two. This could be the decider that puts Andrea Magucci into the top four, or it's going to be Gabriel Lassif winning this one and forcing a critical game three between these two players. Things oh. not looking good for Yellow Hat just far, thus far. Yeah, he's going to see uh, what he's up against, find out it's no blue mana, take a Dovin's Acuity, and... He'll be able to have, unless Nassif draws a blue source right now. Oh, he did. He can get a Dovin's Acuity out. Woo! Woo! Because that was going to get absorbed, I think, if he, uh, yes. if he had to wait. That was a close one. That is the card draw engine that Yellow Hat's going to use if he's going to win this game. So that was a critical play there. Finding that blue mana untapped here plays it. Now, gets that down. He does need to find another, uh, another blue mana so he can cast the absorb because he really wants to prevent one of these Teferis come, coming out. You know, and Minguchi knows his opponent's hand, knows the shields are down. He's going to be Oop. racing towards turn five Teferi. He really knows his opponent's hand. He already knew half of it. Now he's going to know the rest of it again. Minguchi takes a look at what it is that he's working with. And of course, there's a lot of cards that don't matter yeah. here. Okay, right? Wrath, Cry the Carnarium, not two cards you're worried about. Mastermind's acquisition, he could take, but it's a little slow right now. I think he's likely going to take the Dovin's Acuity. So now he only has to deal with, uh, actually, no, that's it. He took the first, that one bounced back. That's it. He'd like to have a search for his Kanti. It's an important card going forward, but he really does want to find a bit of land here off the top of the library. So Naguchi's going to put that in the bin. Yeah, he really wants to play the Teferi on turn five now that he knows his opponent doesn't have access to a counter spell. And if he doesn't draw Ooh. blue mana, he'll know he still doesn't. Look what he found, though. Raska's Contempt. Raska's Contempt. So he actually found an answer to Teferi that he can cast. Yeah, if, if Minguchi does draw the fifth mana, he's going to be a little disappointed. He's going to play it, draw a card, untap two lands, and then the will have Raska's Contempt ready. I think we might see him cast a Mastermind's Acquisition here now that his opponent's tapped out. Nope. He's going to pass the turn. Oh, he's got Chemistry's Insight. He can deal with, get rid of those dead cards in his hand. That is, has been a key play that we've seen. He does find his second blue mana source, but the shields are down, and that is a land off the top for Andre Minguchi, so he does get to play Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Though, as we mentioned before, Teferi not long for this board state. The bad news is uh, Minguchi's got another. He's got a backup, so I think we're likely going to see it come down. And if he does draw a sixth mana, He'll be able to play it, untap two lands, and have Absorb ready to protect it. Put himself firmly in the lead in this game. He's already been putting massive pressure on Gabriel Nassif. Yellow hat on the top part of your screen there. And now he's got to figure out what the plan of action is here. He drew a watery grave off the top of the library, so another blue mana source for him. Not bad here for Nassif. He has truly drawn out of that sticky mana spot that he had by keeping the uh, the no blue opener. Yeah, I mean, he knows there's one negate in Manguchi's deck, so he's, he's likely wondering, did Manguchi make this play with a negate back up to protect against the Vraska's Contempt? He opts to go for the Spyglass, which is a safer play. Get it down. It not only deals with this Teferi, but it deals with the future Teferis. So this is a really sweet play here from Gabriel Nassif. You mentioned he's got to deal with his Teferi on board. He's got to deal with the Teferi in hand. This one card does both of those things. Yeah, this is, a, and it actually gives him a little info, which is huge in the control matchups. Now he knows Minguchi's hand. He knows what he's up against. Wow, what a great play by Gabriel Nassif. Finding the line here and using one of those Masterminds acquisitions to great effect. And now he gets to use that Vraska's Contempt on the Kea if he wants. And Minguchi did not draw a land. He drew another card that doesn't matter, Moment of Craving. Wow. Nassif is right back in this game Look after at starting this. pretty bad. Yeah, after after this uh, Kaya gets exiled, Minguchi will be down to one relevant card. He's having Absorb. That's it. Yeah, and Nassif really wanted a seventh mana here so that he could cast Vraska's Contempt and leave up Absorb. But the good thing about Kaya is, is there's no, it, it's not fast. You have time. You don't have to deal with it this instant. It's not like you're going to get bombarded in card advantage and not be able to catch up. Right now, it's just going to be attacking his graveyard, which is fine, and setting up for later doing some damage, but it's not something you have to worry about right now. Going to go ahead and Thought Erasure take the Absorb. Now Minguchi's basically on blanks. All four of his cards don't do anything in this game. Unbelievable comeback. Although the game is not over yet, unbelievable comeback to get the position where he is by Yellow Hat.
deciding if he wants Nebraska's contempt now that he knows his opponent has nothing. He could also mastermind's acquisition or just dove in security. Very methodical. Deciding on the optimal play. I think he's going to acuity and just hope to hit a land. Really wants to make a land drop here. Does he hit it? No, he hit Revitalize and has to just pass the turn back. And Kaya good. is going to continue to tick upwards. But like you said, this isn't actually applying massive pressure here at this like point. No pressure at all. Really. Right. Losing some of these cards out of the graveyard, unlikely to be a, a game deciding situation until Kaya starts ultimating repeat times. That's where things start to get sticky. Manguchi opted against playing God the Shrine because if he did, then Gabriel would again know all four cards in his hand. Wanted to confuse him a little bit, have some unknown information. Just trying to bluff anything to keep Nassif from going off here, but he's doing it. Dovin's acuity continuing to roll. Minguchi's in a lot of trouble. Now that Nassif is up to seven mana, he can mastermind's acquisition, leaving Absorb up, knowing his opponent only has one unknown card. Wow, what a sick play a few turns ago, though, for Nassif. Things were not looking good for him, and then Sorcerer's Spyglass off of Mastermind's acquisition completely flipped the tables, and the draw steps have not been kind to Mangucci either. He's got a bunch of dead cards in his hand, and okay. there's Afraska's Contempt now with Dovin's Acuity Trigger, and the engine is running here. For Gabriel Nassif, he can start recasting that Dovin's Acuity, drawing extra cards every single turn. He's got that Absorb at the ready as well. Land off the top now. For Mangucci says, Lango. This is why we play the game. You get those opening hands, you think it's all over. If you saw Nassif's face, I think he said a little prayer to the gods. He looked up and he felt pretty bad, and you could see the despair. But now he's off and rolling, super focused. Yeah, maybe a little not like this going through uh, Nassif's hand. Also interesting to note, just from a personal perspective, we got it, you know, when Becca was talking to uh, Andrea Mangucci a little while ago, she, Mangucci said, I'm a huge Nassif fan. Like, Absolutely. I'm, I'm in his chat on so his stream, I'm a sub. Yeah. I give my sub to Nassif, actually, yellow hat. I watch him. He usually streams from Europe, so the time works for him in the morning, driving my daughter to school. I give him my Twitch Prime sub. Nassif's based out of Paris, France. From Mangucci, he's from Italy. I love it. He got the conjecture. He's going to bury him in card advantage. Yeah, this is, this is the value trade about to leave the station here with yellow hat at the wheel. Conjecture is going to bring back an instant. Oh, chapter... my goodness sakes. Going to get that absorb back. And then chapter two is going to get the acquisition back. <laughs> chapter three is going to say everything happens twice. Twice is nice. Marari Conjecture, one of the ways you can go over the top. Now, this chemistry's in sight. He's going to end up. Not going to find anything with it. Absorb that too, I think. Nope. Going to let it resolve. It's not really much you're worried about once nah. you've got the spyglass out. He can save his absorb for the one Mastermind's acquisition out of Mangucci's deck. And other than that, Let's see, Kea down, Teferi's down. That's the actual only card he has to worry about. That's it? Just one Mastermind's acquisition. I'm looking at the deck list. That's it. And obviously the counter spells can protect it and get it going, but the actual only threat. Yeah, the, the only way I see for Mangucci to get rid of artifacts, by the way, is Cleansing Nova. He's going to have to acquisition for Cleansing Nova. <laughs> that's, that's a tall order. Four mana for a five mana sorcery. And he's got to resolve all of it. Yeah. And all that does is get him his Teferi's back, which admittedly is a big game, but still. Yeah, this deck, this uh, Esper Control deck is a little loose to Sorcerer Spyglass. And next turn is Chapter 3. Buckle up. Acquisition is coming. And oh. that's going to do it. Andrea Mangucci says, I've seen enough. I know what my outs are. And wow. That's the Gabriel the fun police forcing game number three. Uh, the fun police did show up uh, knocking on yeah, Mangucci's door. You're not going to get to go to double spell land with me. I think back to Ken Hero and uh, whoever his opponent was that match on day one allowed him to, to show us what he can do. And what, what's the opposite it. of the fun police? Me. You're the op All right, so <laughs> you are Marari Conjecture, because yeah, you, you show up and the party the starts party when starts. David gets there. Let's go. Because, my goodness sakes, that was the thing that Nassif needed to push that one over the edge and convince Mangucci that this one was over, and that means we get a Game 3 decider here, David. I'm so excited for this. Now, the question is, what do they pick? What do they pick? Because so the way the rules work in duo standard is, the first two were at random, but now they actually get to choose which deck to play. It's so really you're sitting in Gabriel Nassif's seat, you're looking at your Teamer Reclamation deck or your Esper Acuity deck. So here's the thing. It's kind of funny. 
Because, like, you don't, the thing you don't want if you're Nasif is you don't want Mono White against Teemo Reclamation. So you're like, okay, I'm just going to pick my Esper Acuity deck. Noguchi may feel he has a good matchup with Esper Acuity against Esper Control. So you say, okay, if he knows that, then I'm going to pick my Team of Reclamation deck because that's good against Esper Control deck. But then Noguchi may know he knows that and say, well, I'm going to pick my White Aggro deck because he might pick that. So it's kind of a game of cat and mouse. Or it's, it's interesting, but it looks like... Um, yeah, Manguchi Both went with players his are on deck. The control decks. All right, so let's sit back, <laughs> get nice and comfortable, and did, we've got the uh, the Esper mirror here. Uh, Manguchi did mulligan, but as we saw, mulligan's not the end of the world in the control mirror. A lot of ways to recoup that card advantage. Also, a lot of dead cards anyway. A lot yeah. of a lot of seven card keeps look like a mulligan. Right, You're like like look at Nasif's hand, right? Two moment of cravings. That's kind of a five card hand right here, and that kind of it really is. Yeah. Also, thanks to the. Mana shortage here. Maguchi's going to put one of his Teferis in the graveyard off of the surveil there. Look, little Twitter from Ben S. MTG. Is that Ben Stark? Is that's, that our man? That's him. That's the guy. The one and only. He said he's out there enjoying us. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Ben. Thank you, Ben. We appreciate that. And thank you, everybody else, who's been giving us kind words over the course of the weekend. We really do appreciate it from everybody here on the coverage team. Yeah. We are having a blast bringing you coverage of the Mythic Invitational. It's thought erasure. It's good and bad news. You're like, man, he doesn't really have anything. I guess I take this revitalize. Yeah, but. I mean, uh, Nasif's hand looks pretty awful here at this point. He really only has the Vraska's Contempt with no target currently at all. Oh, wow, hello, what a draw there. friend. Search for his Kanta off the top of the library. And right back in it comes Gabriel Nasif. That is a long-term advantage that can be very difficult to deal with. Yeah, I mean, like I say, one of the most important things in these matchups and best of one, since there is no sideboarding, when you can remove the bad cards from your deck for cards more appropriate for the matchup, like best of three, is not drawing the dead cards. Search for his Kanta lets you filter your draws. You can just say, look at this. Moment of craving, I don't want it. Yep. Put it in the graveyard. It gives you a better chance to find spells that matter and lands. Yeah, normally, you know, that that card selection availability is really good off of search for his Kanta, but it's 80 versus 100. It's like, well, this card's pretty good, and this one would be fine. I'll take the better one. Here, it's like a zero that right. you're putting I, in the yeah. graveyard. Nope. Didn't want that draw stab. So he's got these thought erasures. He can take away the Vraska's Contempt. He's likely not going to play the next because you don't care about the moment of cravings and you don't want to surveil again. And look, perfect example off of surveil this exactly time, right? Yeah, get about. that thing out of here. We do not want to see Kaya's Mortify. Ref. And there's that Mortify. Huge draw. Yeah, that's one of only a couple that he has access to. So getting rid of that search for his Kanta from Miguchi puts him right back in the running here. Even though he's starting to run out of gas here, Chemistry's inside is a lot of pressure on it right now. Yeah, I mean, it, both players don't really have much going on. He does have a Chemistry's Insight to give him two more cards, but. As we've seen, there's, you know, there's no guarantee that the cards you draw are even going to matter. Here's a, a Mastermind's acquisition, though, off the top of the library for Gabriel Nassif. With the shields down currently for Manguchi, all he can do is play Chemistry's Insight in response to trying to find it in the gate. Yeah, it's pretty um, rough, though. Let's, let's, see what, uh, let's see what he comes up with here. Here's Mastermind's acquisition. Is this going to prompt Manguchi to fire off the Chemistry's Insight? I don't think he, you, you care because there's nothing he can really do for one mana. And you have Thought Erasure, so whatever he gets, you can just take. So it's unfortunate for Nassif that his opponent has another Thought Erasure. Nassif's taking a quick look to see if there's anything that he'd like to get of relevance here. And, you know, there's plenty. There's plenty of good cards I available. Mean, you go for Teferi. As we saw, once the Teferi's are gone, that only leaves him with Kea and Mastermind's acquisition as, as relevant cards. But I don't think he would get that. It's an option, but like I say, it's not going to matter. Thought Erasure's going to take it. And Gucci's. Maybe with Chemistry's Insight. He took a quick look at his graveyard there, did to see if it's, he's making this decision on what to grab with Mastermind's acquisition. You can take a card from your deck as well, but he decided to go for his sideboard. He's going to get the Immortal Sun. Just kind of go for a big haymaker here. Well, it's like a giant Sorcerer's Spyglass. You right. can't activate play, uh, Planeswalker, so it's going to shut off all of them. And you're going to be drawing two cards a turn. And of course, he breaks that synergy by not playing any on his, on his side. Yeah, if this Thought Erasure wasn't here and that Immortal Sun at the table, this game would be over. Yeah. And you saw that look there the from Gabriel to see if he's like, Duh! He knew he had it. He knew, he's like, if this resolves, it's over. That and was so close, and that was exactly what Manguchi needs. Manguchi says, not so easy, my friend. You may be one of my magic idols, but it's not going to be I an mean, easy game to the, win. That's the fourth Thought Erasure from Andrea Manguchi. <laughs> Four <laughs> Thought Erasures, and they all got something good. How does oh, he have no. a fourth one? And look at this. Here's to oh, Fairy no. times two off oh, the top no. of the library for Manguchi. And, of course, it's going to resolve. And the big head shake for Nassif. What a swing in the wrong direction for him. Now he's super far behind. He went from so close. He had 
the Immortal Sun in hand. That could have given him the opportunity to win instead. Yeah. Now he's facing down Teferi with no answer and a pair of I mean, moment of Kraven in hand. Manguchi straw steps the, the Mortify just in time to get rid of the search for his Kanta. Thought Erasure at every possible moment to get rid of the card, the turn before it came out. Another key card there for Manguchi, he found a copy of Absorb. That'll allow him to protect his Planeswalkers here from future draws, and this one has well and truly spiraled out of control right in favor of Andrea Miguchi from Italy, our MPL member, and he looks like he's gonna take that last seat unless there's a miracle in hand here for Yellow Hat. Yeah. That ain't it. Godless Shrine off the top of the library, and Yellow Hat is looking at three blanks in hand. Nothing doing, he has no targets and just an extra land. A great run for Nassif, but it feels like it's coming to an end at this point. Yeah, I, I can't see a way out of this because even if, I mean, there's plenty of time on the clock, you're not going to have that happen with the life totals. Taya can easily, you know, get there and just yep. chunk you for the amount of uh, cards in exile, big chunks of damage. Yeah, yeah, Kaya's a, a very reasonable win condition if the game goes long and if the players get to sit here for a while. And so far, that is exactly what's happening. Andrea Mangucci, you can see his energy start to pick up on the other side. He's got his scarf on. Team Scarf is cheering for him, of course. He's got a cheering section here. Actually, I don't know if you heard him over there, David, but there's literally like a group of people here cheering on Andrea Mangucci. And I anticipate that they're going to go absolutely nuts when he wins this game. And it does seem like that's well, where this go is going. They can go ahead and start celebrating. Yeah, look at this. He says, is it getting warm in here? He's going to unzip his hoodie there because uh, he's starting to feel the joy. It's just got to be so frustrating looking at those two moment of cravings oh, in your hand. so brutal. I mean, if those two cards were just two business cards at the beginning of this game, it would be the other way. It would be as lopsided the other way. He was just one or two cards short of uh, taking control of this game. Yeah, now Nassif is uh, thinking about what could I have done differently? How did I play? Am I happy with my performance? Hey, I'm still lucky to be here. What a great opportunity. What am I going to say to people when they ask me what happened in the last round? He's in that kind of mode right now because this game is over. This is Teferi, hero of Dominaria, ultimate now from Andrea Mangucci. And as happens literally every time somebody ultimates Teferi, they cast another one immediately after. Yeah, it's like a given, it's right? It's just you have it's to do it. just say minus eight, you get the emblem in, and you get another Teferi. Teferi. Yeah, that's just how it works. And the emblem, of course, says that whenever Andrea Mangucci draws a card, he can exile a permanent from Gabriel Nassif. And that means that his land count is going to go steadily downwards for the rest of the game. And it's going to get really ugly here because, as you can see, we've got Teferi, a draw step, a Chemister's Insight, and a jump started yeah, Chemister's draw Insight. Card for any reason, not just your draw step. So things like Chemister's Insight can yeah. get rid of four cards. Yeah, that's six cards just on the next turn cycle all by itself. And take a look at the land count there from Yellow Hat, it is getting low and it's going to be much lower. I would not be surprised to see a concession pretty soon after uh, Manguchi goes for that line of play. Now, the reason he let the Dovin's Acuity resolve is because he's not going to have any uh, lands to cast his spells anyway. Have as many as you want. Yeah, and if he wants, he can, he can cast it. He doesn't have the mana for Chemistry's Insight right now. Manguchi knows he's in, by the way. He did a quick stretch and he's like, I know the, West, the rest of the way this game's going to go. He's this like, is going to be a top four for Andrea Mangucci. Super impressive. He's like, can you point me to the gelato, gelato shop, please? He <laughs> oh, loves, he loves gelato. gelato. <laughs> Whenever he comes home from Italy after traveling abroad, he always goes right to the First gelato stop. stand and tweets out a picture of the gelato that he's gotten under his patented hashtag Mangucci Cuisine, where he shows off all of the different types of dinners and desserts that his, uh, his family makes at home. And boy. Makes me jealous, I'll tell you that. Oh, absolutely. His, uh, his father was in town during the World Championships in Las Vegas, where yeah. I live. And we had talked about his father coming over and me and him kind of combining and making an Italian dinner. But then as he realized, this is my dad's on vacation. He doesn't want to come here and cook a feast. Because I was like, I have an Italian market here. I can go get him everything he wants. Pretty authentic. I'll cook with him. But uh, it actually ended up not happening. I, I, got, I got a chance to meet him, too. Really nice. Oh, absolutely. Really nice guy, and it was cool to meet him. But as we've said before, this one well and truly in the books. There will be no miracle this time. We saw Matt Ness make a miraculous recovery earlier today, but this one is not to be. This is yeah. uh, Mangucci discarding the hand size while Another. Yellow Hat sits here and looks at basically nothing. Another point. Kaya really speeds this things up because it counts the number of cards you have in exile, but your draw step. You're exiling lands. So it's not just the cards that you exile from their graveyard. Okay. That exile number is creeping up pretty fast. 
creeping fast. That doesn't really work. But no, but it is doing that. You get what I'm you, saying. You certainly weren't wrong about it. Here is Chemister's insight on end step now for Menguchi. And remember, <clears throat> with that emblem, there's another couple of triggers coming along. Yeah, you can have the insight. Yep, get rid of that, get rid of that. Yeah, Dovin's Acuity is very safe on this battlefield here. Eventually, it'll just get stranded either in hand or on the battlefield. There's a draw step, another trigger from the emblem. As you can see, the land count dwindling now for Yellow Hat. Surely, he's had about enough. There's another Chemist's Insight for another two, leaving Gabriel Nassif with just four lands left on the battlefield. And really nothing he can do to get out of this mess. So close at the beginning of this game. That's Seriously, it, it. it actually took the fourth thought erasure there from Andrea Mangucci to get the job done. And uh, boy, after that moment, he cast a card draw spell, found a Teferi, and he has not looked back since. Kaya continuing to tick upwards here. Looks like 16 was the exile number there, uh, at least for Gabriel Nassif. So he only needs to get it to 10, so he can minus five it twice. Gotta discard two cards. And he just keeps on shipping the cards. They revitalize now for Nassif. He's gonna cast it. And it looks like Meguchi says, well, I'm just gonna have to discard these cards anyway. I may as well just fire off a Mortify here. Yeah, he's just flexing right now. That's right. Going through the motions down the stretch, but we do have our fourth Contender here in our top four, Andrea Mangucci from Italy. He plays in the Magic Pro League. And uh, he is going to be thrilled. Once you see him win, you're going to see some real emotion out of him. I've seen him win tournaments before the World Magic Cup. And yeah, it's gonna, he knows how to celebrate. He's going to make our top four two MPL members and two challengers. All from Europe. All from Europe. Really strong performance from our European players here. Started with 64. 60 of them have gone home. Only four are going to remain. And it looks like Andre Mangucci is going to be our fourth. Really impressive run by him over the course of the last few days. And that does it. Andre Mangucci seals the deal. He is your fourth and final competitor in the top four. A big hug for his friend Gabriel Nassif. And what a run for Nassif. It looked like he had it. He was undefeated coming in, and the wheels just came off at the end there for Gabriel Nassif. But congratulations once again to Andrea Mangucci sealing the deal and getting that critical fourth seat in our top four. Yeah, that was, uh, that was an exciting match, though. All three games had a lot of ebbs and flows, big swings, things going the way you didn't expect. So uh, unfortunate for Gabriel Nassif, it didn't work out in his favor. No, not quite. Another solid finish, though. For Gabriel, he is going to take home the 12,500 that we talked about. Not a bad trip for him at all. And of course, you know, all the streamers here are loving it. They get to be on camera a bunch. They're like, you know, hi, I stream as well. Uh, for now, though, we've got uh, Becca Scott with Andrea Mangucci.